grateful to be back in the house of the Lord with you all this morning. So thankful for the presence of God. And we are ready to worship him. Can I hear an amen? Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we are here for you. We thank you for your presence. We thank you that you are here with us. And we ask for you to pour out your spirit over this house today. Over every son and every daughter. Come and have your way. We're ready for you.
Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, happy Thanksgiving. Hey, shake someone's hand next to you as you're seated. We're going to do a lot of up and down today. It is great to see you here in the house of the Lord. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome, and we've got um, a nice combination of some great people here today. We've got all of our first service and our second service and our Galt campus. Let's give a big hand to those from our Galt campus for making the drive over. And then I think our most special guest that we have is our kids that are normally in kids' church. Um, hey, let's do this. All of our kids, all the kids stand up so we can see our kids. So you can stand on the seat if you need to so that we can see you because right now you're just the size of everyone else. We see our kids. Let's give them a huge hand today for being here in our adult service. And we pray that they feel the presence of the Lord this morning. Do not worry about the kid noise, okay? I can preach through it as long as it's not my kids. If my, my kids, they get a spanking, right? Even my teenagers. No, I'm just kidding. Well, this morning we're gathered under one purpose, and that's to take a pause from our busy life, and this time of the year truly is busy, and a lot of you have been running full speed the last week, getting um, all your meals ready and having family in town, so we're, we're taking a pause before we enter the Christmas season to celebrate communion together. In Luke chapter 22, we read of the institution of the Lord's Supper, hours before Jesus would be betrayed and arrested and hung on the cross, he gathered his 12 disciples. And in Luke twenty two fifteen, 15, we read that he said to them, with fervent desire, I have desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I say to you, I will no longer eat of it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. Then he took this cup and gave thanks and said, take this and divide it among yourself. For I've said to you, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. And he took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant of my blood, which is shed for you. The Apostle Paul tells us, his, to the church of Jesus Christ, that, that we should continue this tradition until the Lord returns, and we will feast with him in eternity. I look forward to that day. Can I hear an amen? But there's one condition that we must acknowledge, and it's found in 1 Corinthians 11. It says everybody ought to examine themselves. The communion table is an important time. It's a time that you should stop and examine your life. For the believer, you should examine your heart and your life and make sure that your life is right with God. How many of you know we all fail, don't we? Every single one of us fail. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But we have a beautiful thing. It's called repentance. And it's allowing the Holy Spirit to move in your life. Moments like this where you ask him to search you. And, and he'll surface things in your life. And you take the time to repent of those things. For a believer, we're supposed to take this time to examine our own hearts. For an unbeliever, if you're here today and you have not um, started a relationship with Jesus Christ. Or maybe you've been running from that. This is a great time for you to surrender your life. There's no better place than right here today around the Lord's table as we worship to say, you know what? I surrender my life completely. I, I, need, I need Jesus. In your way, you, you can do that today in your own words as you focus your life upon God today. So as we worship, this is what we're going to do in the next moments. We're going to search our hearts. We're going to surrender our lives. And we're going to make that our, sta our state as we go into communion today. So I want to invite you to stand with me if you would. And we're going to enter a time of worship. And this is what we're going to do. Kids, you can sing, you can worship, and enjoy this, this time. Usually you go out at this time, but we want you to feel the presence of the Lord here. If you want, the altar is open. But really a time that you examine your heart, that you search your heart, that you press into the presence of God today. And you make it your prayer. This is what my prayer is going to be. God, I give you all of me. Can I hear an amen? I give you all of me as we go to the Lord's table today. That is the position you should take. I give you all of me. As a matter of fact, would you just close your eyes right now and would you just make that your prayer? God, I give you all of me today. Everything that I am, God, search my heart. Search 
every part of my life today, God. I give you everything. I make you Lord, Lord of every part of my life today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We welcome you. Do what you want in our hearts. Examine us. Examine us today in the name of Jesus.
Oh, creation cry. 
of Jesus. We welcome your presence here in its fullness in our lives, in the lives of our children in this place, God. We welcome your presence to fill this place. Come on, if, you're, if your children are next to you, just put your hand on them and let's invite the presence of God, not only in our lives, but God, I pray this would be a memorable moment for the kids in this room. God, we come to you today with grateful hearts, with grateful hearts, not just for the things you do for us, but God, for who you are, God, for salvation and for all that you bring into our lives. We thank you in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. 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 Come on, let's praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. You can be seated. One more time, we'll do this a few times, and as you're seated, you can take out that little cracker out of the um, elements that you got, and if you did not get elements, please raise your hand real high, and um, I see Joel and his family will get you um, the elements today. Thank you, Joel and family, for everything you do at River City Church. Let's give them a big hand. They serve so well, and we're so thankful for that family and their children. First Corinthians chapter 11 Verse 23 says this, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Turn to the person next to you and tell them it's for you today. Sitting here. It is broken for you. We don't just do communion to remember something that Jesus did. We do communion to remember and to celebrate what Jesus does. Amen? It's broken for you sitting here today. Do this in remembrance of me. As we receive communion, we're going to do two things today. We're going to remember and we're going to celebrate. We're going to remember the breaking of his body. If you've got that little cracker, you can take it in your hand. Today, I, I hold this small piece of bread in my hand today. Maybe it is a calorie, but this small piece of bread, it represents so much more in our lives. This piece of bread represents provision. In the wilderness, God provided the Israelites with life-giving daily manna. The Israelites called this miraculous manna the bread of heaven. Without the bread, the people would surely starve. They would have died in the wilderness. The people of God, they could trust, they could depend on, they could count on God to provide them everything they needed in life. The bread represents provision. God, the provider of all that we need. And as you partake today, you're reflecting, you're remembering that, it, like it says on our, on our money, in God we trust, amen? He is always provided. The bread represents not only provision, but it represents healing. Isaiah 53, 5 says this, but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are what? Healed. We are healed. You see, the bread that I hold in my hand, it represents the very body of Jesus Christ. He is the bread of heaven and in his body on that cross he the bread of heaven he bore it all on our behalf in his body he bore our sickness he bore our disease he bore our pain on that cross he took upon himself not only our sin but everything that makes you less than whole god is our our healer it represents our provision the bread represents our healer the bread represents our wholeness in John chapter 6, Jesus is preaching to a crowd of 5,000 men plus women and children. They were far from town and the people were getting hungry. And Jesus decided that he should, he should feed this crowd of people. The disciples point out to him the impossibility of this task. They only have a young boy that has five loaves and two fish. And Jesus prays over that food and feeds every person in the crowd, and they had leftovers. The people are blown away. They're amazed at the miracle they had just seen. And in verse 36 of chapter 6, it says, Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. This is the big verse. 
This is where, this is where we, we see the point of the miracle. It's not about the provision. It is about him. He is the bread of life. And then he says this, whoever comes to me will never go hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. See, physical provision is great. It is necessary. But Jesus gives us so much more, doesn't he? He gives us a deeper wholeness and a fulfillment in our life. He brings greater life, abundant life, life abundantly. He brings, he brings us the answer to all of life's longings. Every place today that you feel lacking, he will bring provision and fulfillment and wholeness to your life. So we gather today to remember these things. But we don't just gather to remember these things. We gather to celebrate We do not gather to mourn what used to be, but to rejoice in what is. Today, we do not attend a funeral, but we attend a party, amen? A lot of churches, they come to do communion, and it's a funeral. We do it as a present reality. It is a celebration of what he does in our lives today. As we receive communion, we don't just remember, but we celebrate the breaking of his body. We celebrate provision. I've seen it over and over again in my life and in my my family. My great grandpa, when he left to Brazil, he had five kids. He had no financial support. And for 20 plus years of his life, God provided for him in the middle of the country of Brazil. My grandfather left in the middle to the middle of nowhere, Brazil, with less than a hundred of dollars support and a bicycle that he says had no tires on it. I don't know if I believe that or not. But God provided for my grandpa. I've seen it over and over and over again in my family. My dad pastored small rural community churches starting in Hayfork. And, and I, I remember an entire summer without him going without a paycheck. And we didn't have all the luxuries. Once in a while, I'd get a sticker as a present. But as a kid, I got something so much better. I got to see that my God always provides for my every need. See, in my life, I've seen it over and over again. God, when God called me to leave a paycheck for a call, I saw God provide over and over in my life. And I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful that it's not my own cleverness. It's not the own work of my hands, that my trust doesn't have to be in me. My trust doesn't have to be in the economy. My trust doesn't have to be in the government. My trust doesn't have to be in my savings account or in my job or in my retirement. But my trust is ultimately in my God. Amen. He is the provider, and this is represented to us by this cracker that represents the body of Christ. Philippians 4 says, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. As we partake today, if you're here today and you're in need of provision, if you're in need of provision in your life, he provided, listen to me, manna from heaven for the Israelites, and he can provide, come on, someone hear me today, a miracle in your life. He did it, and we celebrate because it's a current reality. He provides for us, and then the other thing we celebrate, we don't just remember, is that he is our healer. My grandpa, my grandpa Houston, his, his family were non-practicing Presbyterians, and they believed in God, but they didn't follow him at all. And my great grandma was going blind. She could hardly see. Um, Her sight was just days from being completely gone. And she heard about an evangelist that had set up a tent in Oregon. And and she went over hearing that some people had gotten healed in the tent. And she went over there and she heard the gospel preach. And she went forward that evening and she was healed. She can see 20-20 vision again, perfectly see. She, of course, at that moment gave her life to Jesus. I mean, come on, wouldn't you? She gave her life to Jesus. She went home. Her husband was so blown away by it. He went back to the tent the next night and he got saved. The whole family got, got saved because God did a miracle. The Bible says in James chapter five in the prayer of faith will heal the sick. I want you to know today I believe that. I don't stand here and just proclaim it as something I don't believe. I believe that we serve a God that will heal us. In Mark chapter six, it says, lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I'll admit to you, And I've got a degree in theology. I've been pastoring for 20 years. And I will admit to you, I do not understand why some people are healed and some are not. 
I don't understand the how or the why or the when. I just trust what the Bible tells us, that we lay hands on sick people and they will recover, and we're going to do that. Can I hear an amen? As we partake today, in, in your need in heal, of healing, I believe that he will heal you. But the healing is just the beginning because there's a greater miracle that's available to all of us, and that's the miracle of wholeness. How many of you know that this world leaves us empty, doesn't it? The world is sucking life out of us, and we, we, we live in a world that people are lacking, lacking peace. Jesus Christ fulfills the deepest longings and desires of your life. He is more than enough. <laughs> I want you to hear me say that. He is more than enough. Someone here today, you've been, you've been a Christian for more than 50 years, okay? 50 years. If you believe that he's more than enough, you've been 50 years plus, will you give a huge amen? amen. You're over 50 years, Carlos? Wow, all right. You were born saved. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Come on, if you're here today and you'd say that's true in my life for the last 25 years, that he's been more than enough, will you say Amen. Come on, the last 10 years, amen, he is more than enough. And this is the cool thing about God. The longer you walk with him, the more you see that to be the reality, that he is more than enough for our, for our lives. He will, for you, bring emptiness to fulfillment. He'll take your brokenness and make wholeness. He'll take confusion in your life, and it's so cool because he'll replace it with peace. Jesus can, and he will put the pieces of your life Back together, he completely restores Psalm 147. He heals the brokenhearted, and he binds up their wounds. People say, I want to see miracles. Man, I tell you, the greatest miracle that you'll ever see is a heart that was broken become whole. There's confusion. There is peace. He brings wholeness and healing to our, to our lives, and God is going to do that today. God is going to bring healing. He's going to bring provision, and he's going to bring wholeness to, to your life. Will you stand with me today and you can take that little cracker? Remember, this is not, it's not a ritual for us. This is a present reality. We believe that Jesus is the one that provides. He is the one that heals. He is the one that will make you whole today. And so you can take that, that little cracker. It represents the body of Christ. It just represents it. It doesn't become the body of Christ right now. It just represents the body of Christ. So it represents all the things that I just said. And if you are in need of provision in your life, I want to invite you to take that and lift it up. If you're in need today of healing, I want to invite you to take that and lift it up. If you're in need of wholeness and peace in your life, we just take that and we lift it up today. And I pray over each one of these people today, God, you are the one. You are the one that brings healing and provision and wholeness to our lives. We thank you for that, God. I pray for each person here today that needs these things, God, that you would meet them where they're at today in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. 1 Corinthians eleven twenty three. and when he had given thanks, when he had given thanks, come on, just give thanks right now that he is our healer, that he is our provider. We thank you, Jesus, that you bring wholeness. He broke it and he said, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Will you partake with me today? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We're going to take one more step here as we do another song. If you're here today and you need healing in your body, you need healing in your mind, you need healing today. That's, that's the, the word healing, just anywhere in your life. You need healing. I want us to just anoint you with oil. Um, and I see, I see Pastor John Kim is back there. If he's here, Pastor John Kim, will you come over here? Um, Pastor Tim, come on up here. You can bring your wives too if they're around and available. I know some of them have kids with them, and that is, that is fine. Um, Jeremiah Rose, will you come on up here? And I, what I want to do, we're not, we're not going to spend a ton of time praying for you because we just prayed for you. And um, as you step out, that's an act of faith. And so I want to invite you, um, you can step out and they're just going to anoint you with oil. You know, on the oils right there, if you'd hand them out, there's three of them. They're just going to anoint you with oil. You can go back to your seat, okay? So, so we want to do that. The Bible says that if you're, if you're sick to go to the elders of church, they'll anoint you with oil and you'll be healed. And that's what we're going to do right now, okay? We've prayed for you. So guys, we're not going to spend a lot of time on each person. We won't be able to. We're just going to anoint you with oil, say a quick prayer, and you can go back to your seat. So we want to invite you as we do this song, you can come forward and we'll pray for you.
themselves do the same.
a few more people open now. So if you want to come on up, you can come up for prayer. declare together forever Come on, let's declare it together. The stone was rolled away. Yes, now death, where is your sting? Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus.
Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you that you are alive, that we serve a risen Savior. We thank you that there is power in the name of Jesus. Amen. There is power in the name of Jesus. There is hope in the name of Jesus. There is peace. Come on, I speak peace over you in the name of Jesus. There is peace in the name of Jesus. I speak peace over your home, peace over your mind, peace over your family, peace over your emotions. Someone, someone here today, you need some peace over your emotions. Come on, someone here today, you need to get your emotions out of the driver's seat of your life, and you need to put peace in the driver's seat of your life today. I speak peace over you. I speak joy over you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Come on, let's give him praise. Amen. And you can be seated one more time, and we'll jump back in to, to communion. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, it says, In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you drink this bread and drink, eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So remember, we're remembering and we're celebrating today. We remember the shedding of his blood. Victor, the shedding of his blood brings us victory over sin. In the Old Testament, priests offered up sacrifices of the finest, most pricey animals on the altar. It was symbolic of the cost of sin. It was prophetic looking forward to Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who would become the ultimate sacrifice for our sin, the blood of sacrifice. Communion was celebrated for the first time on, on Passover. Passover was the biggest holiday. They gathered to celebrate when the people of Israel were freed from the bondage of Egypt and were instructed to place the blood of a sacrifice over the doors of their homes, and it would save them from death. The blood, the blood sacrifice would save them. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 27, speaking of Jesus, it says, and he is better than any other high priest. Jesus doesn't need to offer sacrifices each day for his own sins and then for the sins of the people. He offered a sacrifice once and for all. Can I hear an amen? When he gave himself. Matthew 26, Jesus said, for this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for the remission of, of your of your sins. First Peter 1.18, we are not redeemed with silver and gold and precious stones, but by the precious blood of Christ. First John 1 7, the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. The blood of Jesus brings us victory over sin. The blood of Jesus also brings us victory in life. It's not only a future victory, but it's a here and now victory. You see, you, your life, your family, I don't know if you know this, you are under constant attack. The enemy has a target on you. 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adverse, adversary, the devil, walks around like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour and the enemy, he has an agenda for your life, and it's found in John 10.10. 10. He comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But this is the good news. You do not have to live as a victim to the devil's schemes because in Jesus Christ, he shed his blood so you can have victory over the enemy. Amen. Revelation 12 says, and they overcame him by the blood of of the lamb. They overcame him, the enemy, by the blood of the lamb and the word of their testimony. So we come to communion to remember that, but also to celebrate that, to celebrate the shedding of his blood that here today gives you victory over sin in your life. Genesis 4, 7 says, sin is at your door. It desires to have you, but you must rule over it. Our world is a bad place and compromise is everywhere. But the blood of Jesus Christ, it breaks the hold of sin over your life. The blood of Jesus Christ breaks the power of sin over your life. Sin does not have to rule over you and it does not have to control you. Some, you're struggling with sin. Your answer, hear us today, is in Jesus Christ. Christ. He breaks the chains of sin over your life. He breaks the chains of addiction over your life. He's the one that will bring you freedom. If that is your testimony today, overcome the enemy by giving a huge amen. 
He brings victory over sin and he brings victory in life. You are and always will be an overcomer until the end. My great grandfather, when he died, my grandpa was only five years old and he died of a stroke. And, and as he died, my grandpa clearly remembers him at five years old singing a hymn written in 1704. As he died in his dying moments, he raised his hands and he sang this song, happy day, happy day. When Jesus, remember this is my grandpa whose wife was healed from being blind and gave his life to the Lord that day. He washed my sins away. He taught me how to watch and pray and live rejoicing every day. Happy day, happy day when Jesus washed my sins away. Amen. Amen. The blood of Jesus Christ gives you victory in every part of your life, every challenge, your discouragement, your hurt, your rejection in your home, in your relationships, in your children's lives, in your job. Oh, happy day. The blood of Jesus Christ gives you victory. The cross gives you victory. Everything you need is found at the cross of Christ. Amen. He will bring victory to your life. Will you stand with me one more time today as we go back in to worship? And today... As we go into worship one more time, we're gonna proclaim victory. You can hold on to that cup. We're not gonna take it yet. We're gonna look to Jesus and we're gonna declare his reign and his rule over our lives. I wanna invite you right now, if you'd close your eyes and just put your attention on him because he's the one that will bring you victory. So right now, be thinking, these are the things I need victory over. And as you recall those things, just turn your attention to Jesus because he is the way maker. He's the one that brings victory in our lives. We declare victory over our families, over our minds, over our spirits. We declare victory in the name of Jesus. We turn our eyes to you today. You are the one that brings victory. Thank you, Jesus.
symbolic of the blood of Christ that was shed for us the forgiveness of sins and victory in life you can have victory in life because of the blood of Jesus Christ if you if you need victory in any area of your life we just lift it up right now in front of you and we declare today in the face of the enemy we declare victory by the blood of Jesus Christ and it doesn't make sense to the world around us but we know that there is power in the blood of Jesus and we declare victory today we declare victory for our families and for our marriages and for our finances and for our health. We declare victory over every scheme and attack of the enemy today by the blood of Jesus Christ. And we lift it up high just to let the enemy know today that he has a black eye because of Jesus Christ, because of what he did on the cross. And we will walk on that today. We will walk in the victory that we have. We will walk in it in the name of Jesus. Everybody said amen. Amen. First Corinthians, and he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Will you partake with me this morning? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, let's give him praise right now all over this place. We give you praise, Jesus. We give you praise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.
Praise the Lord. Can I hear a praise the Lord today? Praise the Lord. Amen. Aren't you thankful to be a Christian? Aren't you thankful to know Jesus today? God, we're so thankful. We're so thankful for everything, God. We focus today on what you did, and we're so thankful for everything you did and what it means to us today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, amen, amen. Hey, a couple things, and we're going to dismiss in a second. Um, isn't it great to have both campuses together and all of our service and our kids? And it's just great. Uh, it's great to see everybody in, in one shot and, um, and to see you here today. We're so thankful. Um, I'm going to take the opportunity just to give a couple announcements. Um, in our new year, we have a couple of really cool things that are happening. We'll be starting our men's and our women's again. And um, Pastor Jamie over there was able to negotiate with Lions to give us their big conference room on their side of the building over there. So now we're taking over their side too, okay? So we took over this from them. We took over half. Now we're just going to push them all the way out, okay? You want to push them out? So anyway, so that's really cool because our men have a really good place to meet now. They'll have a conference room and our women will have the Life Center. So that'll kick off at the new year. Also, we're going to be starting something called prayer rooms at the beginning of the year. And it's going to be opportunity for you to come if you need um, healing, you need just further prayer. We're going to have these opportunities available for you. So be watching for those. But right here, right now, we got a couple of things that I want you to know. First of all is our toy drive. Um, I'm going to be going to Mexico in a couple of weeks and taking toys to the houses we build, the children in the houses that we built. Okay, so we want to collect toys. Now, I bring this up to you because I don't need a big toy, okay, like a big truck like that. That'll be hard for me to get there. Little toys like this over the next two weeks, and they'll go to Mexico and be given to kids that would not get a Christmas otherwise, and we'll be visiting the houses that we built. Um, so we get that going on. We also have in the parking lot on December 17th, we're going to have a light thing. we got a big tunnel, and we're going to have lights, and we're going to have blow-ups, and we're going to have a coffee cart, and it's going to be a great time. Come, bring friends. If you can, volunteer at it. Do that. And lastly, Christmas Eve is going to be a big day around here. We're doing a 9 o'clock service here, okay? Christmas Eve is on a Sunday. So a 9 a.m. here, an 11 a.m. in Galt, and then a 5 p.m. here. So you've got three options. You can go to either location, three options for you on, um, on Christmas Eve. Now, this officially marks the end of Thanksgiving and the beginning of the Christmas season, right? It's officially right now, the end of this service right now. Thanksgiving is over, and it's now Christmas season, okay? So we're going to ring it in. I think that Carlos might know this song. It's called Feliz Navidad. All right, you got it? All right. As we do that, don't forget to give. We got our giving stations on the way out. Thank you for being here. Turn to somebody, give them a hug, welcome them. <laughs> 